Hi everyone, we're going to get started now. Um, thank you for joining us today with our National Voter Registration Day press call with AAPI elected officials. Um, this is Alton Wang with Asian Pacific Islander American Vote. For today, we're going to have our speakers um, join us and speak first, and then it'll be followed by Q&A. Everybody will be muted until it is time for the Q&A, and we'll unmute folks um, as it is as you have questions. If you have any questions during uh, the call, please feel free to use the chat function so we can make sure we will call on you. Just to kick us off, we're going to have Christine Chen, Executive Director of Asian Pacific Islander American Vote. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us as we celebrate National Voter Registration Day. 2016 is going to be the largest mobilization effort of Asian American and Pacific Islander voters that we have ever seen in history. API Vote partners in 25 states have been conducting voter registration events across this country this month, continuing through National Voter Registration to the deadlines that are coming up in the next two weeks. They are at cultural events such as the Mid-Autumn Festivals and Dragon Boat Races, at the local Asian grocery stores and boba tea shops. At, you'll see them at community centers, temples and churches, Chinese schools. And now that has, school has started, we see voter drives um, conducted by our local community organizations at community colleges. The largest sector of API college enrollment at over 47% is growing is, is in the community college sector. And we also see high schools with the large API student populations conducting voter registration drives and even doing neighborhood canvassing as we see by our partners in Minnesota, the Asian American um, Organizing Project. In addition, um, the Power Up campaign was launched with Rock the Vote and API Vote where we focus on engaging the regional Asian American Pacific Islander student networks and college campuses that are part of API Votes Ambassador Program. Each week, they have different challenges and are introduced to new inspirations and influencers. So these student networks have tools to empower and engage young API voters across the country to register and to vote. But beyond voter registration, which is a major barrier to participation, we're focusing on educating our voters. Our mailers in 18 states this year were translated into 10 languages. This should be dropping in the beginning of October as we go into the next phase of this campaign. Once we get this growing base of voters registered, we're encouraging people to vote early or by absentee, which gives them more flexibility. Absentee ballots also provide limited English proficient individuals the opportunity to get uh, assistance from their family or friends. We are inviting the ethnic press to partner with APIVO as you covered this year's election. We have research and data on voter behavior and issues on our website at apivote.org slash research, as well as state-specific breakdowns for states with high API populations. We'll be launching language-specific languages, uh, Sorry, we will be launching language specific pages on our website with voter education materials provided by our local partners. We look forward to working with many of you on this call today and creating content that will help API voters, especially those who are limited English proficient and assist them in casting their vote for the 2016 elections. At this time, I'd like to go ahead and hand it over to Greg Sandana, which is the executive director for the Asian Pacific American Labor Alliance and one of the founding organizations for National Voter Registration Day. Thank you so much, Christine and API Vote for um, your leadership and your continued work to engage in our communities, especially in this critical um, election year uh, following the first presidential debate that happened last night. Um, as Christine mentioned, um, Apollo, the Asian Pacific American Labor Alliance, is proud to be on the steering committee and help um, guide the National Voter Registration Day, uh, which was founded in, I'm sorry, in 2012 um, in response to over 6 million Americans reporting they didn't vote as a result of missing the registration deadline or knowing how to register. <clears throat> and um, to be honest, it was very organic and, you know, we, people understood that there were holidays for just about everything else and why not? Um, having a holiday to celebrate um, democracy and so celebrate the opportunity um, to, to, go, to vote for those who are eligible. Um, we're excited because on August 6, 2015, President Barack Obama announced the White House official support of NVRD and also released another procl proclamation yesterday, um, joining with the nonpartisan National Association of Secretaries of State, or NAS, that has been championing the holiday since 2012. 
Um, I'm excited to announce that more than 4,000 organizations in every single state in this country have joined forces to um, come together on a coordinated day of field communications and media um, to ensure that every eligible, eligible voter has an opportunity to register and vote in um, the 2016 election. Um, FVRD is celebrated on the fourth Tuesday of September annually and serves as a reminder um, to register to vote if you are eligible and to check your existing registration to ensure it is accurate. Um, it's very simple and we hope that folks uh, participate. Um, APALA um, is part of a diverse nonpartisan group uh, of the steering committee, as I mentioned, which also includes MTV, the League of Women Voters, the Bus Federation, Rock the Vote, Voto Latino, Fair Elections Legal Network, Nonprofit Vote, uh, former Elections Administrator in Arizona, Tammy Patrick, Secretary of State John, John uh, Merrill from Alabama, and Secretary of State Steve Simon from Minnesota. Um, so we encourage you to visit our website, um, www.nationalvoterregistrationday.org. Um, we do have resources and materials available in English, Spanish, and as well as Chinese, Vietnamese, and Korean. Um, and we're encouraging folks to utilize the hashtag um, Voter Registration Day, um, and we will continue to retweet and share, and um, you'll be excited to see many um, celebrities and artists also participating in today. So we hope, we hope that um, no matter where you are, um, that you'll be able to participate and help, help support and encourage other folks to do so um, today and through um, the rest of the election cycle. Thank you. Great, thanks, Greg. And I'd like to hand it over to Congresswoman Judy Chu, who is um, a representative of California's 27th district and also the chairwoman of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus. Congresswoman. Thank you. Um, happy National Voter Registration Day. I wanna thank APIA Vote and Christine Chen for organizing today's press call. And of course, I want to thank the members of the AAPI media who are on this call for the important work you are doing to get the message out to encourage Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders to register to vote. There are few things as sacred to the American people as the right to vote. Previous generations fought, bled, and died so that you and I could exercise the right to have a voice in our democracy. And as chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus, I know how precious the right to vote is for the AAPI community. It's because of the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882, which prohibited all Chinese immigrants from becoming naturalized citizens so that they would not be able to vote. This discriminatory policy lasted 60 long years and served to disenfranchise an entire community. It's no wonder that when I got to Monterey Park in the 1980s, few Asian Pacific Islanders were registered to vote relative to, to their population, and it hurt them. Many APIs were moving into the city, and there was a backlash against them. The longtime residents passed English-only uh, laws, and uh, they wanted only English on the signs in the city and only English books in the library, uh, but the last straw was when they wanted only English to be spoken in the city. Well, we joined in a coalition and beat that back, but it became so apparent that the city council did not represent the city. That's why I ran for the city council. We did massive voter registration. Because of that, I got elected, and that was the beginning of a new era of inclusivity in the city. So I know the power of the vote, and that's why I'm committed to ensuring that every American citizen, no matter their background, has access to the polls. We have a presidential election coming in a few months, which will determine the future of this nation. Regardless of what party you belong to or which candidate you back, there's one thing I know. We, the AAPI population, can make a difference in this election. AAPIs are the fastest growing racial population in the United States, and we're the fastest growing electorate. Our voter registration numbers have doubled over the past decade. Not only that, our API electorate is projected to more than double by 2040. We also the swing vote in the swing states like Nevada and Virginia. And we are a significant factor in races across this country. Take for instance, November 2014, where Senator Mark Warner faced 
such a tight race in Virginia. And the API population had grown to 6.2% of the population. So Senator Warner made a very concerted appeal to them, and it paid off. An overwhelming 68% of API supported him. And guess what? Senator Warner won by less than 1%. I know that it was the APIs that made the difference. And so, clearly, we have gone from being marginalized to being the margin of victory. And I have no doubt that we can be the margin of victory in this critical presidential election. But in order to truly make a difference, we need to encourage more AAPIs to register to vote. As we celebrate National Voter Registration Day, there are voter registration drives happening all across the country that are being organized by API Vote and the other AAPI community partners. So I encourage every eligible AAPI voter to register to vote. And to everyone on this call today, I say, do not forget the power of your voice, your vote, and your participation in this election. Together, we can register more voters and ensure that AAPIs are indeed the margin of victory in this election and beyond. Thanks. Thank you, Congresswoman. I would like now to turn it over to Congresswoman Grace Ming um, from New York's 6th District. Um, I am unmuting the Congresswoman. All right, Congresswoman. Hi, everyone. It's Congresswoman Grace Meng from Queens, New York. Thank you so much uh, for being on this call. Uh, thank you to Christine and everyone at API Vote for the amazing work uh, that you do in our communities and throughout the country. I'm honored to be on the call with my colleagues in government, uh, especially our chairwoman and fearless leader, Congresswoman Judy Chu, and thank you for all that you do. Um, I just want to echo something that Christine had mentioned earlier. My very first experience in any sort of uh, community and civic engagement was uh, working, uh, volunteering to register voters outside of an Asian supermarket. And so that really gave me uh, my very first exposure as to how important it was for our community uh, to be engaged. Um, I first ran for Congress in 2012, and I really depended on our ethnic uh, media, our API media, and because of uh, what they did in uh, constant articles uh, to our community explaining the importance of registering to vote and then to actually getting out the vote on election day uh, was so crucial to my victory. Uh, I know that one of our largest uh, Asian newspapers, for example, had a countdown clock. So every day in the last um, week or two weeks before the election, they had literally some, you know, a banner that said six more days left till election day, five more days left, and so that really helped amp up the excitement and. Without our media partners, I don't think that uh, we would have gotten such a, a good result. Uh, we had our local Bangladeshi uh, media, many which are local uh, media outlets, sometimes less than a year or two old, but they did a lot of coverage, which was so crucial in helping us to educate the community on the importance of voting. A lot of issues and uh, things that we may all take for granted already, uh, our newer Americans don't may not know about or they don't get to hear about uh, as often, and it doesn't come as second nature. And so the the work that the local and Asian press does is very important to our different communities. Um, I just wanted to emphasize the importance of also uh, working together in our districts and in our uh, communities to register people. We have a few weeks left, depending on where you are and what the deadline is. Uh, ethnic media helping us to publish the deadlines for when the voter registration deadlines are, are also very helpful in how you could register. You know, we're partnering with local community colleges, for example, and we know that there are so many API advocacy groups that are leading the efforts in registering folks. Um, you know, it's, it's important for AAPIs to vote. Right now in Congress, there are only, uh, on our side, 12 AAPI members. Uh, Asian Americans have a very low voter registration 
percentage at 60%. Compare that to the African American rate, which is 81%, and overall percentage of Americans, which is 78%. Only less than half uh, of Asian Americans who were eligible to vote actually turned out to vote in 2012. Um, but AAPIs, as Congresswoman Chu said, really can make the difference. You know, roughly one in four congressional districts have more than 5% AAPI constituencies. So it's, it's very important. You know, we are currently less than 3.5% of the U.S. population, but we are the fastest growing racial group uh, in the country. So it's very important that we get out the message of the importance of voting. And I once again want to thank our media partners, especially those who took the time to be on the call today uh, about emphasizing this message to our communities. Great. Thank you, Congresswoman. We're now going to hand it off to Virginia Delegate Mark Keem. Delegate? Hello, everyone. It's great to be with all of you. Uh, thank you to uh, Allison and Christine and everyone at APIA Vote for supporting us and also for my congressional member friends. It's great to be on the call. Thanks to the media for paying attention. Uh, let me just say a couple things. First of all, I am from the Commonwealth of Virginia, one of the big battleground states. We've been in the battleground now for a number of years. And I want to start by uh, repeating and uh, emphasizing what Congressman Judy Chu said about the importance of Asian American votes, especially in a close election like we've seen in Virginia for many, many years. Uh, for example, in uh, in Virginia's last election, I know uh, Congressman uh, Chu, uh, Chu mentioned Mark Warner's race. Uh, about 10 years before that, when Jim Webb ran for the Senate, he won by less than 1%. And part of the reason why Asian Americans were so excited to support him was because his wife happened to be an Asian American. But more importantly, that campaign reached out to Asian Americans to make sure that our votes counted. And as a result, uh, the 9,000 vote margin on that race was also delivered by Asian Americans. And I know a little bit about close elections because I was, I've been on the ballot now five times. In my very first time in office, I won by less than 1%, uh, as many, many other people in Virginia. Now, let me just give you a little statistic that this is an example in Virginia, but I think that similar examples can be seen all around the, the country where Asian Americans are the fastest growing population has shown and proven that we can actually beat us the margin of victory. Uh, for example, in Virginia, in 20, 2000 till 2010, which is about a 10-year spread based on the census numbers, we it, the Asian American population grew by about 68 percent, which is tremendous. That's a huge, huge number of uh, people that have grown in our state. But what is uh, not as uh, exciting or impressive is that even though our population went from 3.6 percent to 5.5 percent, the number of eligible voters who actually registered to vote still remains at about 3.5 percent, which means that we are not registering as much as we ought to, depend, uh, based on the fact that we are now more present in Virginia than we were. So we are doing everything we can in Virginia in a nonpartisan way to make sure that every Asian American who is eligible to vote as a U.S. citizen is actually registered to vote. And so we have a number of uh, activities all throughout this week and next week and right up until October 17th when our deadline is to make sure that every Asian American knows that if she or she is eligible, he or she should register. And we made it very easy by having our volunteers to speak the language, whether it's Korean, Chinese, uh, Filipino, uh, Vietnamese, or uh, other languages that are pre uh, prominent in this area. We want to make sure we have volunteers that can speak that language. And last night, for example, all of the major Korean-American nonprofit organizations all gathered in Annandale and coordinated to make sure that in a nonpartisan, nonpolitical way, every single one of those organizations and churches can go out and reach out to their community organizations. And I know the same thing is happening in other ethnic communities, so it's really good. So my final point here is what can you, as our members of the media, especially those of you who are very interested in, in cover Asian American communities, what can you do for us? First, I'd like to ask you to just make sure the facts are out there, uh, the fact that the deadlines are coming up, and especially in places like Virginia, but other places, they all have different deadlines for when you can register and what the process is. Please get that message out there as, as much as possible and repeat it over and over and over again. It's not a matter of just telling them one time. It's a matter of making sure people understand they still have the opportunity. Uh, secondly, remind them that it's so important as Asian Americans, we are Americans, and that we own this country as much as anybody else. For us to have our leaders that we want, we ought to exercise our vote and choose the people that we want. And the fact that we can make a difference, I think, is really important. And then finally, uh, please pay attention to all the campaigns and what they're saying, especially issues that matter to us, whether it's immigration or health care or jobs or economics or, or you know, potential uh, trade or international issues. 
please cover that in a way that uh, Asian Americans can understand why this is so important. And regardless of who you support in the campaign or what issue that you care about, it, it really is up to the, uh, the media to make sure that our folks get the facts because there's so much rumor out there, so much uh, stuff that's on social media that is just hard to believe. So you as a credible reporters who cover our, our communities, I think you have a, an added uh, voice when you speak on an issue. I think most people pay attention to you more than they'll pay attention to something they see on social media. So I ask you to just really help us by educating our community on why it's so important and what the issues are. Thank you. Great, thank you, Delegate Kim. We're now gonna hand it off to Assemblyman Rakim Kurji um, from New Jersey General Assembly District 33. Assemblyman? Can't, can I mute him? Sorry, slight technical difficulties, everyone. Unless he, he's muted himself. Maybe unmute everybody and then. He did, he did mute himself. Um, Assemblyman, you might be muting yourself right now. In the meanwhile, in the meanwhile, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask it in the chat section of the website uh, of the of the application and we'll make sure to get to your question assemblyman are you there All right, in the meantime, meanwhile, is there any questions um, that we can answer? Uh, can everybody hear me? Hello? Is that the... Hello. Hi, is this who's speaking? Uh, this is this is Raj Mukherjee. Oh, I'm hi. not sure if uh, you're on. I'm still oh, muted. Difficulties. Go okay, on. okay. I think it. Yeah, it had me muted. <laughs> uh, apologize for that. Um, I, I echo everyone's uh, appreciation to APIA vote um, and uh, and to the members of the ethnic media on the call. Um, I remember uh, my first election that I was able to participate in. Um, I had enlisted in the Marine Corps when I was 17, um, looking forward to my 18th birthday. Um, and I, my first election in 2002, I voted with a military absentee ballot. Um, and uh, fast forward now to 2016, in my home state of New Jersey, where the Asian American Pacific Islander community has grown so rapidly, like throughout the rest of the United States, and where uh, we now comprise 7% of the state's electorate, um, which means we ought to have six members of the state legislature, uh, but like Delegate Gein in Virginia, I'm the only Asian American in our General Assembly. Uh, I think it's a sad fact, and it's a reminder uh, of the obligation that all of us on the call who are in elected office have to members of our diaspora to impress upon them the importance um, that if we don't secure for our immigrant community a seat at the table, we're going to be on the menu. And when you look at the pace at which our population has grown, um, the fact that our voter registrations and the fact that our voter turnout for those of our communities who are registered hasn't kept pace um, is what uh, I'm hopeful, um, uh, along with everyone on this call, that APIA votes efforts will change. Um, and I, when you look at communities where there are large numbers of Asian Americans, uh, for example, a quarter of all congressional districts, one in four congressional districts, um, have at least 5% uh, of their population 
participation to Asian Americans, um, uh, we have to ensure that the Asian American community who are first generation immigrants are aware of local and state elections after 2016 passes, uh, after the presidential election passes, which everybody's aware of, um, uh, where their vote will have an even amplified, more amplified effect um, on the outcome of elections in their communities. And also the Asian American youth population, where as diverse communities go, our youth population turn out in lower numbers than our African American and Latino brothers and sisters. And so we have to make sure that young Asian Americans who are aware of the election um, take enough of an interest in their democracy to participate. Uh, and, and that's what I hope um, that you all in the fourth estate and in the ethnic media will help, help us communicate uh, to AAPI communities throughout the United States because it's just far too important an issue uh, that's lingered for far too long. Great. Thank you, Assemblyman. Um, we are now going to move into question and answers. So if you have a question, please indicate it in the chat box and we will unmute you to ask a question. Again, if you have any questions, please indicate it in the chat box and we will ask the question. Okay, well, it looks like we don't have any questions at this time. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Um, please know that everything that we talked about today, including the recording of this call will be sent out to everyone um, and we will also include the deadlines and key dates um, for everyone in that email. Thank you for joining us. Awesome. Happy National Voter Day everyone. Hello. Uh, and he says, hello?